Arsenal are in crisis. So last night, Martin Odegaard sprained his ankle playing for Norway. So you've got three midfield starters that are unavailable for the next game. And the next game is against Spurs. So you have Martin Odegaard, sprained foot. You've got Moreno, 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 with a broken shoulder. And you've got Declan Rice missing for one game with that red card against Brighton. Why are we having international breaks three games into the season? Even with the Champions League format, you're going to have so many games and players are going to get injured. For me, watching England is so pointless. It's so boring. I don't get excited. It's like me watching Friends. Just pff, hate it. So who are we actually going to have in midfield? So you've sold Smith Rowe. You've let Vieira go on loan. You've sold Reese Nelson. I know Reese Nelson's a right winger anyway, but still, still not the point. You've sold Jacker last season. I can guarantee you, Mikel Arteta was thinking Declan Rice, Martin Odegaard, and Moreno to start this match, and now all three of them are just not playing or unavailable or injured. So you've got Partey, Jorginho, two holding midfielders that are not quick at all. They're probably just going to get run right in midfield. Probably put Sterling in the ten, maybe. I don't know. You could put Wanieri in there, but you don't put a 16-year-old kid, 17-year-old kid in the starting lineup against Tottenham. Like, it could work, but he'd be kicked to bits, wouldn't he? You could put Timber in there, but he hasn't played in midfield for us ever. I know he, he, he does when he inverts, but not starting in midfield. You could put Zinchenko in there. He does play midfield for Ukraine. That's the thing, though. Like, we we should have had so many more signings in the summer. I think Arsenal have definitely shot themselves in the foot here. Even when Xhaka was in the team, you still needed another midfielder because there's so many more games to play. I don't understand it. How could you come second behind Man City with two points on the last game of the season and be in profit 10 million pound after a summer transfer window it's it's unbelievable definitely think he should have had another striker i know this is all in hindsight but everyone could see it everyone could see it because i know next transfer window is just gonna you're gonna have to buy another goalkeeper i just don't know it's so i hate being an arsenal fan sometimes but you know arsenal are in crisis i genuinely think if we lose the next one or two games that's our season over i know it's really really early in the season but last season we were two points behind man city there was a famous quote lose four no more to win the league it's going to be one because man city are such a powerhouse at a minute i know the nations league is trying to stop all these stupid friendlies against san marino that you're going to win 12 nil every game no offense to san marino congratulations from winning their first game the other night but these fans of san marino are probably still celebrating because they've been ranked the worst team in the whole world and they actually won. So go check out this video. Their last win was in 1994. And we take a look back from all the technology and everything that was around in 1994. So go check this video out. See you in a bit, everyone. Nice one. And yeah, go subscribe. We're going to be doing loads of watch alongs and stuff. So uh, see you in a bit.